Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first live podcast of my art blog. I'm Päivi Erola, a visual artist from Finland. And this is the first live broadcast. And I'm going to broadcast live uh, more than just this time. So it's currently uh, 11 o'clock in the morning in Finland. It's raining a bit here. And it's currently nine o'clock in the UK and evening in Australia, New Zealand. Welcome everyone who are in Australia or New Zealand. We have had so, so little time together before this. Uh, and all Americans, Canadians and such who sleep at the moment. You can watch the replay in my blog and also in my YouTube channel. And um, uh, I hope that I'm, I'm currently broadcasting in my library room and I have my uh, computer here usually. And uh, also my four little botches are over there in the background. And as I blocked a few uh, weeks ago, ago, they often get excited when they hear me speaking. So I hope, and I know that their the sounds will come true. So I hope you don't uh, be bothered uh, about them too much. And uh, I, I rather uh, have them here than to have them transfer, for, transferred somewhere where they are really upset. So they like to be in their places. I've just uh, they usually have uh, lights on. I've just sh shut the lights down. If that will mute down them a bit, let's hope so. But can happen that they will get really excited when we keep going. I'm going to keep these sessions uh, fairly short. And that's a huge challenge to me because I'm very chatty. And usually if I'm recording videos, I usually cut about two hours away. So, uh, but I, I try now to use only 15 to 25 minutes, probably more close to 15 than 25. And I also have a very narrow topic to be focused enough to, to make it through. So hello everybody and welcome. And today we are going to go through some of my small sized art pieces and talk about small, creating small pieces of art. I usually talk about creating bigger pieces because that's uh, often what people haven't always tried. And sometimes, you know, your natural scale can be a lot bigger than what you have used to create. Uh, when I was um, a teenager, I remember joining an art group where there was this woman who uh, uh, create who who tried to create the same than the others, and actually, the teacher gave her a bigger size of paper and. And it seemed like there weren't as big size that the woman was able to put the person that that she was drawing in that paper. And finally, the paper was huge and it filled the floor. And then it happened that she was able to create that. So sometimes it can be better to create big pieces. But this time I'm going to uh, talk about the satisfaction that uh, small work has given to me too. And uh, even if I like to create big paintings, sometimes it's just uh, the moment just just calls for a small piece. And of course, the easiest thing that you can uh, use is um, create, creating ATCs, artist trading cards. And uh, uh, I have a few of these here, but because uh, I don't think, because they're so detailed, I don't think they will show all too well. So I have some here, but I also have um, a slide where I show you some more. 
And I, I love to draw these kind of portraits and especially the animals are my favorites. <laughs> it's so fun to uh, create this kind of more illustrational than, than fine art. And, and while drawing, think about what kind of story might, might this person or, or, or animal have. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's so much fun. And uh, uh, I will now share the screen so I can show you, show you some more. So here are a few of the ATC cards that I've, I've uh, drawn in the past. And as you can see, I've also decorated some of the backsides. And if you, uh, there's also this uh, term called ACEO, which is Art Cards, Editions and Originals. And usually people who sell these cards use the term ACEO. And ATCs uh, stand for cards that are just swapped uh, without any fee. And um, uh, I've, I've just created this, not sold any, and uh, and I've just uh, uh, used this for for fun, and and swapped this for fun. And um, uh, I also show the 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 other collection that I have. There are also some, uh, as you can see, some that uh, uses pointillism as as uh, as the foundation and i actually have a blog post that has instructions for this pointillism uh style uh cards i will uh add it in the chat and i will add it in the show notes to uh the address to the blog post and uh then these more illustrational things these are Based on my class drawing factory, I don't teach exactly ATC, drawing ATC cards there, but I show, teach a method of using stick figures to create uh, detailed drawings and imaginative drawings. And I actually use that method often when I want to create something fun. Just start with the stick figure and then start adding layers. And I show in that class, that's just a small self-study class. Uh, I show there how you can uh, add layers so that you can start from the top and then go the background and start adding adding stuff and that's a that's a fun thing but of course this is more like uh crafting uh, and illustration than than um uh, in the f field of art if we talk about the the, the core of art and uh, we're now moving forward to uh the more probably a bit artistic stuff. So next I want to talk about watercolors. And that has been inspired me a lot recently. I've created, uh, for example, these quite small watercolor panoramas. I will unfocus the screen so that I can show you how it started. It actually started that I had these leftover pieces of watercolor paper, and then I just splashed some some paint there, and then I thought, what could I do there? What could I make all this uh, watercolor backgrounds that are not uh, particularly special or anything? So then I got the idea that. Um, uh, when I've been traveling, especially abroad, I'm not a huge traveler because I have dogs and I hate to take them to uh, to a kennel. But uh, so sometimes I do travel and I have these really inspiring travel photos that are nothing special. They are just like tourist takes photos, you know, you just... Uh, shoot a picture here and there, and uh, they are not any artistic stuff. But uh, they bring me the memory of that place, the atmosphere of that place, which excites me and uh, 
And I realized that I can use those images as a reference photos, but not those that I would copy them exactly, but more like using them, um, using them so that I'm inspired by them. Uh, this kind of mindset is introduced in my class, Inspirational Drawing, and it's, it's the foundation of everything I teach, I think, and uh, that you can take inspiration from the photos and not copy them exactly, but connect with the atmosphere and um, get reminded by all the me good memories and create something new out of that. Because, you know, when I was in Scotland many years ago, like in this, this photo is from, from Scotland near Glasgow. And uh, I was there many years ago. And it, it feels like that place has become like a fairy tale like place in my mind. So uh, actually, it's really inspiring to connect that, that, um, how would I say, a replica of that place that has started to grow in my inner world. And so I use that simple paint stuff, added some masking fluid and then started working with the similar shapes and created a new panorama of Scotland. And uh, I've, I've done a lot of these and um, and uh, some of them are from last summer, Italy. I was in Florence and Rome. I especially loved Florence and all the Renaissance stuff there. And uh, then uh, many, many years ago, I was in Barcelona. And I also have a blog post uh, showing this process more in detail. So I I paste the, the um, address there to... Uh, uh, about watercolors and about this kind of uh, mixing the intuitive approach with the with the reference photos and using the techniques that watercolor has because I feel that watercolors are quite technique oriented medium. They uh, require. Oh, how would I say? Require is not a good word. I would say that if you know a lot of watercolor techniques, uh, then you can create a lot of stuff really easily when you match the technique and the, the exact uh, purpose that you have, the exact goal that you have. And I actually think that many books don't explain that really easily. And I've been exploring this lately. And I have an upcoming class, uh, which starts uh, in the summer, in July, called Watercolor Journey that I'm preparing at the moment. And I will show that techniques, how to use the techniques and enjoy the techniques and how to make most of them uh, and create uh, all kinds of landscapes, seascapes, cityscape. And that doesn't mean you have to use travel photos. You can just connect with your inner world and express your inner landscape and inner seascape, inner, inner cityscapes and uh, use that. So. Uh, that's something to look forward to. And I'm going to run this class in my community. So I have a creative community called Bloom and Fly. And I'm going to start running classes uh, through that community. So when you join the community, you also join the class. And you have the possibility of uh, get personal feedback every Tuesday. And we also have live sessions too. And uh, then uh, from watercolor pieces to oil painting, of course, uh, when I talk about oil painting, if you use acrylics, that's totally applicable here too. So uh, my current project is to create this really small uh, uh, piece 
And uh, it started so that I found uh, a frame for when I was organizing stuff. If you've been following my blog, you know that I'm a really huge, <laughs> I, I love organizing. I love having everything neat and tidy. I love remember what I own. So, but I hadn't remembered that I had saved this kind of small frame. And then I asked my husband to, uh, to cut me a hardboard uh, piece, and I used some cotton fabric that I had. It's, uh, it's an embroidery cotton fabric, and I attached it on the cardboard and made a stretched canvas that way. I used gel medium to attach the, uh, the fabric on the, on the hardboard, and then I used uh, gesso to uh, to cover that fabric surface to have a gesso as a primer there. And then I started painting with oils. I had no reference photos at all. Uh, so my first uh, uh, thing was to just have some uh, umber and uh, play with the color values and to figure out what would come out. And then I got this idea of uh, walking in the forest and finding a kind of flower, maybe not a flower, more like a flower bud uh, there. And that would be very exquisite, something very rare, very uh, unseen uh, little plant. And, uh, and I connected with that uh, thing and that inspired me so much. So I created the first layer only with uh, brown, brown and white. I used zinc, zinc white, which is a bit trans, more translucent here than, than, uh, the, um, uh, than uh, other whites and titanium white, for example. And then uh, uh, when this layer was uh, dry, uh, then I added a yellow layer on top of it because i i had this idea of yellow yellow flower i don't know why but it had to be yellow it was yellow in that uh, image of the mind that i saw and then uh, i finished uh, this piece by adding uh, thin uh, paint strokes with titanium white and adding some purple uh, and I wanted to keep the colors quite muted. And uh, I will show you, this is still a bit, a bit uh, not, not dried uh, fully, so I try to be careful, but, uh, but uh, I don't know how well it looks, but it, it will be a birthday present for my sister. And it's called Secret Wish, because I think that that uh, sometimes uh, the secret wishes that we have, we often forget that they, they, they actually exist. And it's like you're walking in the forest of your mind and then you find this secret wish that's not blooming yet, that's just a modest a little flower bud but uh, it's it's there and it feels good to find it and that was my inspiration inspiration for this piece so yes i'm quite on time and uh, uh i hope these miniature pieces inspired you uh mm, tell me if you have any future plans to create mini uh, small art have you created small art uh if you're here live you can answer by chatting and uh i also have one more piece to show you and uh, uh that's not by me that's uh something that my artist friend is working and um Uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful portrait, and uh, it's uh, 
uh, I think it will be a fairy and uh, this is painted, this is, this who paints this is Eva Nikunen, a Finnish fancy artist and we sometimes paint together and I was so inspired when I saw her painting this beautiful portrait and uh, uh, the smallest brushes that that uh, she used, and I think it took several several hours for her to get uh, that rose border on the place. And uh, I think Eva is an artist that has a lot of inspiration to offer. So I've asked her to come uh, the next live broadcast to talk about the project that she's she has had um, recently and she has created um, a book uh, by herself from start to finish and she uh, has this creative journal she calls it creative journal and she has illustrated a book that has over 50 detailed really really detailed pencil drawings and i think that's a project that uh, many of us wo wouldn't uh, wouldn't take but what uh, interests me is that how she find the resilience to do all those beautiful detailed uh, drawings within few months so she has been working really hard and uh, um, uh, uh, I think that it will be interesting to know how many pencils did uh, she use. And I will have this, this uh, interview uh, on, uh, let's see, on May 3rd, that's... Um, 6 p.m. in Finnish time. I will paste it. Paste it there in the chat. And uh, that's 6 p.m. Finnish time on May the 3rd. And that's 4 p.m. in London. 8 p.m. Pacific. So this is all uh, for you who live in, uh, in America or Canada. It's a bit bad timing for you who are in Australia or New Zealand, but it will be recorded like this one and and you can uh, watch the replay later. So Eva will come to talk to me and I will interview her live here at Crowdcast where I'm broadcasting this. And um, uh, then in May, I also have other news. So I'm also... Uh, mm, I've almost finished a new self-study class and it will be on sale in May and it will also be uh, uh, available uh, for the members in my community for free, for the membership fee. And I will also paste the, the address for, for the community. My art community is called Bloom and Fly. So... Uh, for this next self-study class, which is for beginners and all those who don't feel inspired at all. And you, you will get, uh, via that class, you will get in my studio and spend a day in my studio. And uh, I have dedicated this uh, class to one error that I have had, and that's very decorative one. And uh, I think that if you're a beginner or if you need new inspiration or some some pep talks, this this self-study class will be really good for you. And you can take that class as a self-study version or then uh, or either you can come to my community Bloom and Fly and get that class uh, uh, with other content with the live sessions, weekly feedback and such. And uh, you can you can create with the lovely community. It's a really great group of wonderful artists, uh, diverse group of art. So uh, don't be worried about what kind of art you will create. Uh, it's a diverse group, and you can also post any.
kind of art uh, that you create there, not just uh, uh, that are connected with the monthly theme or the latest class or such. So uh, uh, see uh, the, the address for the community. So uh, it's now 11.24, so I, <laughs> I'm quite in time. So it was really lovely to have you here. And uh, I will now end this broadcast. And I hope to see you ne next week when I'm interviewing Eva Nikunen. So have a great day and have a creative day especially. Bye-bye. <laughs>